What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Today, we got a guest on, man, been around a lot of people that I know, been in some USPs, seen some things, done some things, I'm sure. When you see him, man, I promise you he's not Amish, but he's got a badass Stacey Adams hat on. But anyway, we like to smile around here on Blood on the Razor Wire TV. Jake, tell the people who you are, where you're from, and we're going to get into your story, brother. I'm Jake Ely. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, when I was younger, I thought being like tough guy, dope dealer, and all that was like cool. I thought selling pot, which ironically, pot's legal here now. But when I was doing it, it was a felony, and you'd ruin your life. You know what I mean? And I got to the position where I'm dealing pounds of the stuff and literally I got into a high speed chase and I threw 18 pounds of weed out on the interstate I-94 and smashed into one of those cement barriers because the truck driver, he was trying to be a hero and blocked me off, you know? And uh, I went and did some state time. I did like a year and a half, you know, and I'm thinking I get out and I'm, I'm thinking I lie, you know, you do a little bit of time and it's the state and it's not necessarily like a, super tough place and you're like and that wasn't bad you know and i go right back to it man and literally um police took some money from me again and i had a buddy of mine die that was really close to me the undercovers killed him and i got to that point where i felt i was owed something and literally like i absconded and i started doing some stupid stuff and they kicked in the door of a meth lab looking for me and I don't even do meth, but they knew I hung in the area and they shot a guy going out the window and they told the guy that they shot. Yeah. They told the guy they shot him because they thought he was me. And so I'm like, and I had some friends that I, you know, so-called friends that were like, look, you could get some money together. I got a connection in Texas. You can go down there and get some drugs. And you can mule them back and you can make some money and you, you know, do this whole outlaw shit. So I went into a federally insured credit union and with a mask and told them, you know what it is and threw a backpack to them. But well, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. That lady grabbed that backpack and she looked at me like I was a piece of shit. And when I was, and she's holding the backpack and she's going. And so I know I got 90 seconds to get in and out. So I literally pulled the gun out that I had and I, I was I think I was smart because I'm right handed, but I used the left hand with the gun. And it, it takes a lot to do that, man. It's it's a subconscious movement. So I pulled the gun out with the left hand, put it to her head and like, you know, move it, you know, and then it's like, yeah. And she still didn't move. But the other ladies were like, ah, and they came up and, you know, they filled the backpack up with money. And it's so sad because it wasn't even 10 grand, Chad. It wasn't even ten thousand dollars. And uh Literally, bro, I got away, you know, and they ended up catching me, man. I went down to Texas like I was going to, and not even two weeks later, this is like January of uh, 2006. Literally, bro, they, 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 I called home because like when, you know, a lot of guys think, oh, I can do this. But when you go on the run, you already know, like when you're living that life, what do you do? You go back into old habits. You go back to people you love or you know, and you reach out to them, you know, because that's what you're familiar with. Well, that's what I did. And they expected that. They had drops on the line. There wasn't a lot of guys in this area doing stuff like I was doing. So they had already went to the parole office and said, hey, give us 10 guys there, white, you know, 5'10 to 6'0", 160 to 180 pounds with violence on the record. And, they, and, and I was one of them. And they found the other ones, and they were where they were supposed to be. And then everyone they talked to, they're like, oh, no, he fled. He left the state. He did. You know, and it's like, so now they're like, oh, yeah, we want to talk to him. You know what I mean? So anyways, they came up like the men in black, man. I'm down in this motel in Corpus Christi. Don't know hardly nobody down there except the guy I'm supposed to meet to get the drugs. And uh, I seen these big old suburbans come flying in with the cone light on. They, they, they uh, you know, just when you're locked up like we was, we don't know technology. And they literally just got to where they could ping off cell towers. And so I don't even know that, but like literally they pinged off the cell tower and then they went into an area where it was like within like a three block radius. And my dumb self is all pale. I'm white. 
I'm not in a, you know, I'm like, I'm like three motels down from where Selena got killed. So I'm not in a good area. And it's like, I'm sticking out like sore thumb and not even realizing it. You know what I mean? I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm cool. You know what I mean? It's like, they come rolling up, grab me up, like straight off the street, just boom. And, uh, let me stop you. How old were you? Uh, 22. 22 years old, white boy from Michigan down in Texas with yeah. 10 grand that you just robbed. Are you down there getting high? You partying? What are you doing? Man, I was hooked on Oxycontin, man, and I started doing H. I ain't gonna lie to you. I did, man. I'm embarrassed about it. It screwed my life up. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I was I wasn't living right. You know what I mean? And I made a lot of mistakes because I wasn't living right. You know what I mean? It's 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 it's, it's you know it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. They get you. They line you up. Now, is it a Fed case? Well, look. Originally, it the marshals are the one or the the FBI is the one that arrested me, right? And they said, you're subject of a bank robbery investigation. But we got you on a parole hold because of the fleeing and a loon and throwing the dope out the window. I'm still on parole, right? So they used that to extradite me back. You see what I'm saying? And my only violation with the state at this time, because I haven't been convicted of this, is leaving the state without permission. So literally, they go like, okay, sign these papers, which... I should have never done, Chad. I should have never signed the papers because then my Fed time would have ran before, like it would have counted. So I'm going to tell you what they did. They did that. And then literally I go to, uh, they sent me to a place called Muskegon. Anyone from Michigan knows it. It's, it's called MCF. It's like, it's like a level three. It's like, it's not, it's not super max, but it's, it's the lowest level life can go. So you got guys walking around with free movement. They got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit looser. And, uh, parole board comes and they give me a parole bro because the only violation they're seeing is you left the state without permission to go to another state well guess what 40 43 days 44 days i think it was after they gave me a parole because you know i still gotta do like five months before i would have left anyways the fed swooped down and indict me and literally give me 15 years for that bank and i only would have got Six years and six years, five months to eight years, one month. That was like the guidelines, but they career they career offended me because of the pot. That's now legal. That's I mean, it, it blows my mind. Okay, and and literally they career offended me because that and the fleeing and the loon is a crime of violence. Go figure. And I'm like, I said the only one that got hurt was me. <laughs> yeah, it was a crime of violence against me. And and and, and they weren't trying to hear it, bro. They doubled my time. Okay, and so literally. They took me back like the judge. I swear, you know how it is when you go when you go to federal court, and the judge says what he says. Usually you execute your sentence like right then. Like he said, I'm remanding you custody marshals for execution of sentence. Obviously, with jail credit, you know, what I mean, that's what this judge says. Okay, federal judge. Bro, these marshals take me back to the state because that's where they they say, oh, we borrowed you on a uh, on a writ. You see what I'm saying? I. Uh, they they got la a lot. I, exactly, I mean, I know exactly what it is, but I want to talk about that Fed case and you and you going to federal prison. Oh my God, dude! Listen though, so I I, I max out my state. They don't count none of the time towards the feds. So 2009 rolls around, bro, and I'm just starting a fresh 15 in 2009. So we're in the freaking van going to MCC Chicago, and the feds are like, you know, you guys want to know where you're going? And there's like six of us. And everyone's like, where am I? You know, and they're like, hey, all you guys are going to FCIs except one guy's going to a pen. And I don't know nothing about this stuff. And and these guys are like, am I going to the pen? Nope, you're going to Pekin. Nope, you're going here. And then I swear after like the fourth name, I just said, hey, Ely's going. That's my, you know, Ely's going to the pen, right? He goes, yeah. And so I just was like, oh, wow, right? So I get to MCC Chicago and I'm trying to, you know, talk to people. And, uh, they're like, dude, you're screwed. Don't, you know, this, that. And I'm like, I mean, I'm I'm not a coward, but I'm like, wow, it's that bad, you know? And it's like, now I'm now my mind, like I wasn't even worried. I was more mad about being locked up. I wasn't thinking about the the like what ifs and where I'm, you know what I mean? And so literally, bro, I get to Terra, I went to uh USP Terra Hut first, but it was good then. It flipped. You probably heard about it flipping, but it was, it was, it was at that time, it was good. It was still rocking. And they wouldn't even let us on the yard. That's how bad it was rocking for a week till our paperwork came, like till our files came. 
Like, like they put us in the shoe for a, they put us in the shoe at the FCI for almost a week. And like, listen, literally my selling in the shoe, he's like some guy from the FCI that got cased up and they upped his security level. And he finds out I'm going to a pen. He starts beating on the door. And he's telling him, uh, I'm not supposed to, did they raise my points? I'm not supposed to be in here with him. And I'm thinking, he's got tattoos all over him, swats. I'm just like, I'm like, so now, and then he's telling me, bro, you don't want to go to their life flight people. They're, 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 they're hitting the canisters. And you know what I mean? He's like, because they're trying to cross the street. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, he's telling me basically just check in and be a silly. And I'm like, no, I'm good, man. I'm going out there. And uh, yeah, bro. So I like, literally I get there and luckily I knew two people. That, that were there, you know what I mean? And, and and for anyone, like, wow, these people, they haven't been there, obviously. And I swear, Chad, I don't know if it was like that for you, but it's where it was like going back to the 1950s, okay? I went to go use something. They're like, no, that's a black phone. That's the black TV. That's the black this. That's the white. And everything's segregated. It ain't about if you like that or you don't like it or if you feel like that, you don't feel like that. That's the way it is. Like, like it's, it's separated, man. It's like... um it's it, it's hard to explain, man. People would think that like you're ignorant or something, and, and, and I'm not, you know. And it's like, but that's the way it is. Like it's and, and and you have to fall in with your people, man. You know, you if you're strong and, and you handle your business, you can do your own thing, you know, as a man. But at the same time, you're gonna put in work, and you're gonna support your people. And by putting in work, I mean you're going to have to do an act of violence against someone of your race that comes there that's not supposed to be there or someone that's already there that's messed up and had warnings or been talked to. And it's not a game. Like I literally went from the state and I'm like, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be the same thing, bro. I was not on that yard four hours and they'd already ran me to see who I was that quick. Like, it was like your license plate. Like, like, what's your number, name and number? And they're already on the phone and calling Pacer. I mean, they, you know, there's a thing called Pacer, guys, that they, like, if you've got something to hide, they're going to find you. Trust me, okay? And, and and so they already run you. And then the guy comes up, this Mexican guy, and I'm talking to my buddy that I know. He says, he says, hey, man, uh, he's obviously, he's like, he knows I'm good. He's like, hey, tell your buddy he wants to take a shower, man, because it's about to go down. And I'm like, and I ain't been here four hours, bro. And all of a sudden, I see two guys, like, ten minutes later. They chase this one guy down, and they tackle him. One, job, one dude's job is just to lay on him and hold him, and the other one's just booking him. You know what I mean? And I'm just like. Let me stop you, because I want people to know what, what the word booking means, right? Go ahead and tell them. I mean, I can tell them, or you can tell them. No, he's, he's, he's stabbing him with the intent. I mean, most of the time, sometimes they pump, well, they fake. But, but this, like, he was intending to try to murder him before the cops could hit their panic button and get people there to stop it. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, they got bear mace and everything now. Like they're not messing around. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's the least of your worries. You know what I mean? If you're the guy getting stabbed, you probably want the bear mace. Like you, you know, you're, you're, you're fighting for your life, you know? And it's, it's, it's screwed up. It's like for a young man like you that just came from, you know, the state system where they're not really this wild, um, at least not in your state. Right. To see something like that, man, are you like, wow, this shit's real? Yeah. It's like a prison movie? Yeah. yeah, it was It was just like a prison movie, man. And it was like, it's it's screwed up, man. Because it don't matter how close, like, I, I'm blessed. I have a good family, right? But, like, say, it don't matter if you have a good family. You're a thousand miles away from that family, okay? You, what are you going to do, get on the phone? Ah, you know, it's like, you got nobody but yourself. And if you're lucky, maybe one or two guys that are going to have your back or at least halfway have your back enough to where it's not going to, you know. And here's another thing, Chad. I learned, I didn't learn this right away. It's a popularity contest. It really is. I mean, you can be a good dude and all that and like whatever. But if somebody with more drugs or more money or what, and it's your race and they don't like you, they can, they can, they can create a, a you know, sew you a jacket. You know what I mean? I, I never had that happen to me, but I seen it happen. You see what I'm saying? And it's like for some the people I was gonna say for the people listening that don't know what so a jacket is, it means that literally they tell enough stories or their version or their reality of you to where they get enough simple minded people or people that are under the influence to believe it to now it's a fact. And then now you're guilty or you might you know what I mean? And it's like now. Now you're lucky if you don't get hurt, you know, it's, it, it's insane, man. Every day, 
if you're not a paranoid schizophrenic when you go in, you'll be one when you leave. And it's screwed up, man. You know, that's what I want to talk to you about. You know, when, when people sew a jacket, you know, people are like, you know, hey, look, they don't like you, so they're pushing the envelope. Yo, look, man, dude, he's doing this. He's not paying his bills. He's intermingling with the blacks, or he's over there with the Mexicans all the time. He don't. He ain't white, bro. And and they push that envelope to a point where people start to dislike you. Then they're like, you know what? We're gonna send. Yep. He's out of here, man. We're getting him off the yard. Send three dudes to just smash him, right? Hey, Chad, tell him it's just like look. After that happens, all it takes is for you to change the channel. And you know what I mean? Like on, on American Idol or something. And dude's like, oh, he's disrespecting me. I was watching. Oh, that's it. It's over. He's done. Because they've already done, created all this havoc for you to where, you know what I mean? Like I literally seen a guy that that happened to. Like he literally didn't do nothing but piss a couple people off just with words. He wasn't even really a bad guy. But he changed the channel. And that was the final straw. You know what I mean? It's like. Running with the Midwest guys, right? At that time? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's a kid, I think, over there, probably around the same time as you, named Wayno. They had a little Midwest, white Midwest gang. Do you remember that gang? What were you, you talking about? The Zambinis? Yeah, the Zambinis. I couldn't remember it. Yes. I got a great memory, Chad. Yeah, listen, they smashed them guys off the yard. And But look, there's a couple, now there's about 20 of them. And they got went Illinois, you know, they're all Illinois dudes from the, the state prison, in Illinois. And they got to the feds, they recruited some guys and they thought they were going to run stuff. And literally like the independents and the skinheads and like all the, you know, the white groups got together and were like, they got to go. And, and they broke one dude's neck and literally yeah, a guy named Westmoreland broke this guy named Texas neck. And, 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 and literally though, I'm not going to lie to you. They spent, the yards split up, they turnstiles and they can control them at that time. It wasn't always split, but it was, you know, your access is your movements controlled. And there's a couple of them yards, like the small yard all the way back by the kid, but closest to the kitchen, that was a small yard. And there literally was more Zambinis on the yard than there was independence. So a couple of them independent guys, they're running, you know, like they're running laps trying to get away from them because they, it kicked off all at once. That's the thing about the feds. It's very organized. When they go to do something, they'll, they'll set, they'll give you, your friend, your other friend, ten other people a watch set to the exact second, and they'll say, "Hey, man, when this hits this second, you do this." And you know what? They're all going to do it because if they don't, the one guy that doesn't or whatever, whenever they figure it out, he's going to get hurt. Like it's 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 how screwed up it is. Her hole was a dangerous place back then when you were there, and Plus, they got the they got they got the death uh, chamber over there, right? Yep. Yep. They lock us down when they kill somebody. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't all the time, but like people would die there. And it's so screwed up because when you put work in and go to the shoe for fighting or booze, you can talk to them guys. They're up on the third floor above you. So, I mean, that's depressing, man, to, to have a guy above you in a vent that's like, you know, he's dying. He's going to die. Like he's never leaving. Like he's, they're going to kill him. And it's like, you know, I mean, it drains on you. Not only are you in a closet the size of a bathroom with another guy, there's nothing in there. But you have to hear some guy freaking moping about he's going to die. And I mean, I feel for him. You know what I mean? It's like. Anybody that you talked to when you were in the shoe there through the vent? Yeah. You know, who? You know, in fact, who? one of the guys I talked to was this guy named Chevy Kehoe. He had. Uh, I was with Chevy in USP Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for some reason they had him up there, and I don't even know what it was all about. But they had right moved after him. he escaped. I think they moved him over there. Okay, they, yeah, he was up there like in a thing, and I didn't know who he was at the time. Like I wasn't, you know what I mean, up on anything. And he's telling, and, and he got almost mad at me and my celly for not like, oh, like bowing down, like oh, you're you're in our event. Thank God, you know. And it was just, it was crazy, man. He drew this tattoo on my chest. Did he really? He didn't tattoo it, but he drew it. It says Aaron Gobrog. It was the dude off the Slim Shady clothing line with an Irish flag. But that's another story. I did a story about him on the channel about Chevy. So, you know, you're in the, you're down there. How many times have you been to the shoe over there? At Terre Haute? Four? Four times? You strike me as the type of dude that was in prison, maybe not doing the right thing right away. Am I right about that? No, I, listen, hey, you know what's so crazy you mentioned that? Listen, I got there. And, like, you know, it's great commissary and all this stuff, right? But, like, you only can call up your people so many times and say, hey, I need this or I need that, you know? You develop habits. It, it might be drinking. It might be 
funk dope pies of dope or whatever it is okay and and then it's like now you gotta get a hustle so what the quickest hustle is you make a wine and and then not only like they changed it like i remember you probably remember when they changed it from i think it was a 200 series to a 100 series yes and that's like you literally can almost kill somebody and do this and it's on the same level as making a batch of wine it's insane and uh, i mean as far as like the the you know, BOP is concerned. I'm not talking about outside charges, but literally, bro, I went into the winemaking business and, and and this is to show you what type of place you're dealing with. Me and this guy, this guy got here, his name was Keith Gleave. He's from uh, Oregon. Big old, like, uh, firefighting lumberjack, okay? When, he was one of them uh, European kindred, EKs. I mean, they're not a lot of them, but there's some of them. Anyways, he was one of them. Well, his, his celly was the DWB. They didn't like me because I didn't like him. He was a piece of crap. And uh, literally, literally, we was making wine together, and like we was both babysitting it, you know, like like holding on to it and whatever, warming it up, you know, you know the. I know, but I want you to tell the people what babysitting wine is. So literally, like you're holding it, you're holding it and watching it to make sure the police don't get it or it don't, you know, and and you're trying to get to where it's done. So either you can drink it, or you can trade it for freaking money, and and or trip the the prison equivalent of money. Well, anyways, this guy, the dirty white boy guy, he takes three quarts out of this. I mean, it was something like that out of the batch that me and this guy have, the the, the, the EK. Well, he strains it. It comes up short. So guess what the DWB says? They're in the cell because you know how it's like you're almost always locked down. They're selling. The DWB says, yeah, he probably took it out when he was babysitting it. He's got a reputation for that. Bro, I swear to God, I didn't. I had a reputation for drinking and saying some dumb stuff and fighting, but it was I'm not a thief, you know what I mean? And so he was a piece of crap. And so the, the big old lumberjack comes down to my cell, right? Comes in, it's like, we got a problem. And I'm like, I'm thinking he's talking about like an issue, you know, like a, a racial issue or something. So I was like, what's up, bro? He's like, you tried to rob me. He tries to snatch me off the rack, you know, because I'm sitting there, I'm reading a book. So luckily, I, I, you know, I, I kicked out at him. Luckily, one of them actually connected, and I hit him in his head. So he goes, you know what it is, and he takes off. So when you tell somebody in prison you know what it is, you're probably about to get stabbed, at, at, you know, at, at, or, 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 or you're going to fight at the very least. Like, it's it's serious. And so I jumped down, and I'm like, you know, I'll boot it, and I'm going down the tier because they got, you know, it's a, it's a hallway with cells. And so I'm walking down this tier and I get to the dude's cell. He's standing in the doorway and he's got me, you know, by several inches and a lot of pounds. And he's got a knife in his hand. Okay. And he's like, come on in here. And I mean, this is how crazy is. And I says, I'm good. Like, I'm not like, I'm going to charge into a dark room with you in the doorway with a knife. I'm good. So he lunges at me with it out on the tier. And I, I, I jump back, you know, and I, you know, he, he claimed to be a good dude and all that. And I, I believe he truly thought that I probably did that to him. So I said, bro, you got me by six inches and 80 pounds. You don't need that. You know what I'm saying? And to his credit, he peeled his shirt off like the macho man, Randy Savage, and wrapped it around the neck and threw it. The minute he did that, Chad, the minute I seen that thing, I, I started just hitting on him because I'm, that's the fairest fight I'm going to get with this dude. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to lie to you. I see him. I, I, I messed up. I should just plowed him down. But I, I, I seen him go like, like the, you know, the eye, the eye, he did an eye roll, okay? So I'm like, oh, I got him. So I stepped back to this. Well, he hit me with a three-piece that, like, out of nowhere that I said, like, I was like, I can't do this no more. So I grabbed his leg. I didn't know he was diabetic because the minute I snatched his legs, he collapsed. So I start, you know, ha I'm hammer fisting this guy like this. And I hear somebody say, please, please, please. So I get up and I walk away. He slithers into his room, right? Well, I'm not going to lie. He, you know, he's banged up, but he can pull a hat over most of his. My orbital's like sticking out like this. You know what I mean? And when that happens, you know what it is. We like to, to tell the people out there, when that happens, when you're hurt like that, you can't go like, say, I need medical attention because that's right. Literally, you're eating soups locked in your closet. You're like not looking at the cops when they do count. You got to, you know what I mean? Like, because that's what you got to do until it goes away. You know what I mean? And it's like, and, 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 and that's if you're a good guy. If you're a bad guy, you're leaving on a stretcher. I mean, it's, 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 it's literally... It's, it's, it's like a fight or flight fucking death mode, man. It's insane. It's, it's definitely insane. You've only been out a year and a day, right? Yes, sir.
a year I and want a day. people to know that because you're high strung like a mother. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of that, a lot of that comes from being in there, bro. It affects you mentally, emotionally. Oh, We're gonna, we'll, we'll get into that stuff in a minute. But being in Terra Hut, man, what other crazy things have you? I want pe- young dudes to hear this stuff, man. I want them to know what's going on there. This is how screwed up it is. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this. Now, I met some good DC guys. Okay, but they're a big group. The D, the, the any. See, here's the thing. Anyone on an Indian reservation that does anything that's considered a felony, it's a fed crime. Anyone in Washington D.C. that does a crime that's considered, you know, over a parking ticket or a misdemeanor, it's a fed crime. So those groups naturally have are big in the feds. Well, the D.C.s, a guy named, and I, I you'll probably help me remember his name right now, man. He was a I want to say ABT he was down in Pollock. He got into a knife fight in like 08 with a, a with a with a DC guy. He I put his, Gar- I, I Gar- put his, Gar- Gar- I put his video Kansas. up. I put his video up. It's, it, there's okay. a video yep. of the actual stabbing. Yep, Gar from Kansas, I think his name is. So, anyways, he shows up to Terra Hut. This is how crazy this is. This is the, the business. It don't matter if you're reading books and you're minding your own business and you're paying your bills and you're a good guy. It don't matter if you're going to church. This guy shows up, okay? Some guy says, he killed my homie, okay? So they says, you guys got to handle that. So, of course, you know, being the white guys are like, no, we're not doing that. He fought for his life, and he won. Like, like we're not punishing him for, for, for surviving. Like, he fought, you know, he wasn't like he snuck the guy. They literally were, you, you, you got the video. And uh, so they say, well, we're going to get him. And we said, no, you're not going to get him. And so then they said, well, we're going to get any white dude on the nine o'clock move. So imagine that. Imagine you're trying to be a Bible thumper or whatever you're trying to be, man. You're trying to mind your own business, go home, right? And imagine you're a target now because some guy showed up that you've never met from some state you've never been to. And now you're going to get killed. You could get killed. You could get taken hostage. You could, anything could happen to you. And it's like, literally, that's, that, that, that screws me. So what we did is we all freaking, well, not all of us, but a lot of us, we pried these bars back to where we could get through the turnstiles because they got like turnstiles. It's almost like when you go to a concert or something. But anyways, we got the strongest of us to pry it back because they didn't have them welded right. And we slithered, we like literally slithered through the yard. So we all got on this yard and we had a meeting, you know, all the, the white people. Well, the DC guys was on the, other side, there's a guy named Kentucky Tony. He's been all over. You probably know Anthony Artrip. Yeah, he like he, yeah he he blew up some stuff all over. He's he's whatever. When it was he's there, and he's you know he didn't call it for us, but he called it for a lot of people. Okay, and a dude named Otis, white guy named Otis from Florida. He was trying to do some stuff. He had a life sentence, and he told on somebody in Beaumont when they killed that guy in 13 or 14, and he went home. I heard. I don't know, but anyways, I mean, I can't find him in the system, so he probably did. Anyways. They tell the D.C. guys, you know what it is. So these D.C. guys, I mean, there's probably about 40 some of us and we got knives and I got an ice pick. I mean, we all got picks and our knives. And, and it's like, I, you know what, Chad, it's still crazy. And I want these kids to know that it was a Tuesday at 745 in the morning. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, man. I could have been like in school. You see what I'm saying? I'm thinking to myself, like I almost went back. I'm like, I'm like, you know what I mean? Like I'm picturing another life. I'm on this freaking yard getting ready to do battle like William Wallace. And and literally like, you know what I mean? Like it, it blew my mind. So so Kentucky Tony, he's drunk of moonshine. This idiot tells him, let him through, let him through. So after like 14 of them get through, I said, I'm like, well, are we going to let them all through? Let's get them. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's what I'm on. Like, let's, Let's like, why are we going to let them all be to its equal numbers? Like, you know what it is. Like, the cops already know they hit the deuces. It's damn near shift change. So nobody's showing up. The guy in the tower is screaming, shooting stuff already. And so I'm like, let's get them. So I swear, bro, it looked like some tarantulas. Like, all you seen was dreadlocks going through back through the hole. They're trying to get out of there. Like, they realized what it was. You know what I mean? And then next thing they surround the freaking whole, whole yard with guns and those, those cattle proud looking things that, Go off your intercoastals and rip your, you know, little ball thing. They got these things. I'm telling the audience, they got these little things with a ball on it, and it's like a stick. And they, and like they were, 
poke you with it. And it literally, they say it's, it's, they say it's like a, um, a humane thing. It's not because what it does is it goes like this and it rips your ribs to where it feels like you're breathing fire. And they got all that. And it's crazy, man. They're shooting freaking rounds. And they like the first three are supposed to be non-lethal. They're supposed to be like, well, and, and then they, you know, they, they, no one's up there checking it. And then they should know they're firing real, real live ammo. And it's like, you know, they got flash bang grenades. I mean, it's traumatic, bro. Let me, yeah, stop you for a minute. Let me stop you. I mean, did you guys start assaulting the DC dudes? Yeah, we started stabbing them. And they got, they, that's what I said. They like, they literally went out the, out the door. And then the, they, this is what's so crazy. That's how, like, how, you know, police can't protect you there. Like, they're, they're, they, they can control shit, like your movement, but like when you're out and everybody's out, they can't stop an incident from happening. Literally, like, they came and let these dudes, I promise you, they let them go back to their units, okay? We're all in the yards. The lieutenant screams, put all your, I got you all on camera. Put your knives in the, you know, they, they got these cement things that are like Port of Johns, you know, urinals, they got like a cement. It's, it's, a, it's a crude, cr yeah, it's a crude trough for you know, crapping and peeing. When was he tells us to make a pile in that with our knives, right? And I remember dude looked at him after they were already all gone. He said, did you take their knives? Because nobody even touched them. You see what I'm saying? They were just trying to get us away from each other by that point. And, 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 and I swear to you, man, this SIS lieutenant, he was some tall, he was a tall dude. He was like, like he was, it wasn't this dude named he's Brace. He came from Colorado, we're part of them cowboy. The inmates were fighting stuff. He had testified on them, other cops, to become a lieutenant. It wasn't him, but the other lieutenant that he was as tall as him. And literally, he said, Spanish? No, he wasn't. He, but his wife, she was smoking hot. She was a lieutenant too. It was crazy. It was, he told, he told everybody, let them off the yard. Don't touch them. Because we basically said, hey, we're not coming off the yard. Like, like we're not going to be unarmed. You know what I mean? And I'm not gonna lie, they did not they let us off, bro, and they pat none of us down. They did. Literally the the couple psych ladies, because when and when you're in prison and they hit that button, it don't matter if they're a psychology or a kitchen worker, they gotta run to that to that emergency. So they like the psych ladies try grabbing a couple guys and they straight up don't touch them, let them go. And so I'm not gonna lie, when I get back to the cell, I'm trying to bend this thing and put it in the toilet I'm, I mean, I'm, in my mind they're coming they're coming you know what I mean but uh they didn't come man they 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 got Kentucky Tony they got Otis they got like the main guys that were on the fence originally trying to orchestrate all this drama they got all them and they got you know and imagine not even being involved in nothing trying to be, you know trying to do your time right and everyone that started this shit's gone and you come out and the white guys come to you, your people come to you, and they're like, hey, go talk to, we go talk to them DC guys. So now I got to go over and talk to these guys that we just almost got into it with. And I don't want to do that, but like, I'm just trying to get an understanding to where it's like, hey, man, not in the unit. I want to stop you for a second because you said almost, you mean these are the dudes that made it off the yard that didn't get hit up that you're over there talking to because well, you guys did get into it. And I mean, it's well known that it happened, right? Yeah. Right. Right. And you know what's crazy? Because even dudes said, like, they were, there was, like I said, man, there's some DC dudes that got honored. You know what I mean? And there's some messed up people, just like any group. But unfortunately, there's a lot of, you know what I mean? Like they're violent and messed up. And, and a lot of them got crazy amount of time because it's the feds when, if they were doing state time, they wouldn't have did all that. So they're, you know, and it's like, uh, like they were like, hey, man. You know, the homie had a problem. Like, you know, the dude is talking to me. He's like, hey, the homie had a problem. He's like, he was out there with a knife and, you know, doing this. Because, you know, they watched everybody, you know. I mean, I saw who had what, too. And, and he's like, look, I told him. His name was Stoney. He was like, look, I told him, man, he did what he was supposed to do. Like, he was like, he, and, but what I'm saying is that he didn't find fault, believe it or not. You know, he's a black man. I'm a white man. We both got into it over some stuff that we didn't even want to start or get involved in. But he still respected what I had to do because he's like, basically, if you don't do that or you don't even make an appearance, you're going to get freaking hurt by your own people. It's not of the other people you got to worry about. Your own people are going to get you. Let me ask you this. You ever personally have to stab somebody? I did. I did. What's that like? What goes through your mind when you're like, damn, I got to stab this dude, bro? Listen, you're hoping you don't. I ain't going to lie to you. Me? I was hoping I don't. 
but dude, it wasn't even my thing. It was it was a it was it was a sack dude that I was helping out named Chaos. And, I, mean, I, just and, got, I just got Chaos out of jail, bro. So you know. Did you really, yeah, Jeremiah, Kirby. Jeremiah Kirby? I just got him out. Oh wow. Okay. Well, yeah. Dude tried getting away. Dude tried getting away, and I was just like, basically, boom. You know what I mean? And and and. You help Chaos? Yeah. I need Chaos to come on the show, bro. I got I got help. I got him out of jail. I wrote his motion, dude. I I'm the person that got him out. He had 35 years or something like that. Yeah, and he's free. He had two different jurisdictions. But we'll talk about that later. So you end up stabbing dude out there to help chaos. Yeah, you want to know what really got me, though? It wasn't even stabbing. It was this. Literally, bro, I, I, I read a lot, okay? I'm a nerd. And literally, I'm trying to buy, I'm, I'm in this thing called the Blue Gold Program, okay? It's a step down. They had a terror hut. Like, it was for dudes coming out of the schmoo, or if you messed up at terror hut, like, you're over in, like, this lockdown unit, Okay. And it's supposed to be nine months, and I ended up making like like fourteen or fifteen months. You know, I, I messed up and started over. But anyways, I'm over there, dude. Slides. Some, he's like, "Hey, you like the, you like coast to coast? Do you like uh, conspiracy stuff?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Hey, man, read this." So he slides me this packet under the door. Okay, bro, I'm I'm going through it. It's like you know, clip body count, pyramid stuff, all kinds of you know, outside the box. In the middle, of, guess what's there? A letter, typed, that says. To the prosecutor saying, Hey, I cooperated. I want my time cut. I did this, I did that. They basically do saying, I told him the D-. then he signs it, dates it, and puts his name and number, okay? And he didn't realize it was in there. And he gave it to this other guy, this scumbag named Swamp. From, like, he caught he's got like a 99 year sentence in Texas, but anyways, he was running with Indiana. His name, he's not America's most wanted. Glenn, Glendale Horner, but he goes by Swamp Man. When with Swamp is the one that gave me the fucking shit, right? So I'm reading, I see it, and I'm like, dude screwed up, dude's messed up. And 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 so then I go to Swamp, I'm like, come on, man. He goes, I didn't see nothing. And, and if you see something like that and then you don't bring it forward and they know that you know, you're gonna get hurt as bad as the guy that's no good. And literally, literally, like I bring it to the table, and Swamp Man's like, you know, of course he's out the picture now because I'm the one that brought it forward. So they tell me, me and this dude named JoJo got to go crack this dude in the head or get him beat, you know, mess him off. Well, it was like a spur of the moment thing, bro, because literally, like, this all happened within like a six hour period. Okay. And literally, I, I, I put a towel on. I told all the white guys, I'm going to put towels on. We all went out. And I, I, what saved me was I never looked up. I never looked up at the cameras. I kept my head down the whole time because, you know what I mean? I, I was smart about that. And uh, I'm thinking a rock and a sock. Because the white guy would jog two laps. He had a you know, routine. And he played pinochle with these three black dudes. So I went over there and told the black dudes. And I'm like, look, man, I'm about to hit this.